So let us continue our discussion on resistive heated evaporation. We are discussing on the physical vapor deposition of metal films and out of that we have already discussed this resistance heated evaporation and its advantages and disadvantages are also mentioned. The advantages are it is simple, it is inexpensive process and it does not produce non-ionizing radiation. That is one important point because if it radiates some of the uh, 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 ions or if some emission is there, so that emission may deteriorate the quality of the film. For example, if any uh, helium ion or, or say uh, uh, alpha, beta, gamma rays are emitted during deposition process and that may damage the metal film, it may create some defect into the metal film. So that is only possible if the uh, if the metal ions are produced by heating some of the elect uh, some ions or electrons with a high energy with the target materials. So that is not there in resistant heated evaporation technique. So here that problem is not non-ionizing radiation is not there, no ionizing radiation. So another problem is small charge and the filament life is short and contamination from heating element. That is obviously a, a disadvantage of this resistive heated evaporation technique. Second method is inductively heated evaporation and in inductively heated evaporation we use a crucible and that crucible is shown here. Here in this figure this inductively heated evaporator is shown here the molten charge is kept inside the crucible and crucible is an insulated material boron nitride crucible because you are heating the crucible by inductively, inductively heated arrangement. So then uh, this is insulator and these are the inductive coils through which you can send RF energy and here the charge inside the crucible will be heated and it forms melt of the metal and then it will evaporate it. So here the deposition rate is high because considerable large amount of charge you can accommodate in the crucible, large crucible. But here also there is no ionizing radiation because it is not evaporated with uh, energy bombardment either ion or electron energy bombardment on the metal. So that is the possibility of ionizing radiation is less. But here you have to use crucible, mandatory use of crucible that means contamination from the crucible is still there here. So that means that problem still lies, okay. So this is a technique but it is not much popular and because the contamination from crucible is a important consideration in high purity metal film, okay. And the third technique is electron beam evaporation and electron beam evaporation is technique is different from earlier two techniques resistive heated evaporation or the inductive heated evaporation technique. Here what we do, we use a crucible like the inductive heat evaporation, but crucible is not heated. What is being done, a charge is kept inside a crucible that is known as this crucible and the charge, this uh, is known as a heart. The crucible inside electron beam evaporator is known as heart. So on heart there is a small group, there you can keep the charge, charge means the metal which you want to deposit and here the deposition is, deposition is through electron beam. So here is an electron gun, so this electron gun means you have to use a filament and from the filament electrons are emitted, so in electron gun purpose is emission of electron, okay and it follows the Richardson's equation, thermionic emission of electrons. So those electrons are emitted and they are passing through an accelerating grid 
So, this is an accelerating grid and passing through this there are deflection plates here you can see the vertical deflection plates so that the diverging nature of the electron beam are focused and converged using the, the deflection plates. These deflection plates obviously has to be applied some uh, potential and electrons are charged particles so automatically there will be interaction and that is known as the electrostatic lens section you can say. So, after that after passing through these deflecting plates the electrons are now passing a magnet, magnetic field and with the action of the magnetic field the path of the electron beam will change is not it because since electron is a charged particle it will have interaction with electric field as well as magnetic field. So, that means uh, the field orientation of the or field direction of the magnetic field can be adjusted or the magnet can be placed in such a place so that the beams electron beams will be deflected around 270 degree centigrade and that beam will incident heat on the crucible. And after emerging from this focusing, ar focusing arrangements whether it is electrostatic or electromagnetic lens whatever it is. So, after emerging from this they will form a spot you can see this the electron beam has formed a spot here. So, this spot is incident on the surface of the charge and now by adjusting the field of the plates deflection plates are here and the spot can be moved on the surface of the charge just by controlling the focusing after focus then the orientation the path the scanning arrangement of the spot electron beam spot can be done with the help of uh, the uh, the electrostatic or electromagnetic lens system you can say ok. Now, if this electron beam the high energy electron beams are incident here. So, the locally over a small region the energy will be transferred onto the charge is not it. So, if the energy is transferred so that particular region locally it will be melted. So, that means the whole charge is not melted, but locally wherever the electron beam is incident that particular spot will be melted and evaporation will take place. So, thus we found in this particular case the whole charge is not melted rather is a small portion of the charge and that too on the surface, surface of the of the charge is melted and it is evaporated. So, obviously there is no chance of contamination from the heart or crucible because if the whole charge is melted. So, that liquid will be in contact with the heart and from there the contamination may come, but in this particular case since you are melting locally. So, contamination from the heart is not there will not be there because uh, the, the surface here will be melted but in the vicinity of the of this uh, crucible that means the interface here the is not melted solid is not it. So, this arrangement will produce very high quality of film pure metal films compared to the resistivated element and inductivity. Resistivity evaporation gives you lot of contamination or impurity from the filament because directly filament is in contact with the metal, but inductive will it heated although contamination will be there, but it's less compared to the heat heated, but here almost clean nil contamination from the crucible or the heart. And here uh, uh, the large source you can use uniform thick metal film is obtained because the spot electron beam is scanned here and as a result of which you can you can get uniform thick metal film multiple source you can use because here the the heart which are using that may have several groups and each group you can use different metal. So, that means electron beam can be deflected either the first group and the second group then third group by external control external 
uh, voltage variation or magnetic field direction change you can do. And by using that just the uh, electron beam, you can direct the electron beam from one heart to other heart. So that in the first heart say titanium, second heart say cobalt, third heart may uh, say aluminium like that. You can have two, three metals there and if you want to make alloy just by directing the electron <coughs> beam from one heart to other heart, subsequently one by one deposition you can make it. So that is possible here. And at the same time, if you have two electron beams and then two heart, then you can simultaneously the two electron beam can be used for evaporation of two metal simultaneously. One electron beam may be directed to a particular metal, other electron beam may be directed to other metal. So both can be evaporated simultaneously. That means layer by layer you can deposit different metals or the two or three metals you can simultaneously deposit so that you can get an alloy mixture, is not it? So that possibility is there, okay? And uh, uh, other is a pure metal film because contamination is less is one advantage. But disadvantage here are the ionizing radiation. So here 10 kV voltage produce aluminum K alpha cell excess. So 10 kV voltage, okay, they produce aluminum K cell excess. Because you see the, the energy of electron beam is extremely high because the energy of the electron beam is transferred onto the metal and that that's why it is melting. Whole energy is coming from the from its acceleration energy of electrons, kinetic energy, impact. On impact, they release energy onto the metal, and because of that, it is here energy is transferred and it is heated and it is evaporated, isn't it? So uh, uh, that's why you need 10 kV kV voltage. This is electron gun power is 10 kV. Sometimes use 2 kV like that. For aluminium, we require 10 kV. For other metals, maybe 2 kV enough. So that with that energy, if the electron beam incident on the aluminium, so aluminium K cell X cell will be emitted. That is the radiation and that radiation, the film will be exposed by the radiation and which will incorporate defects and damages, okay. And uh, the, this, this is the only disadvantage here, electron beam evaporation. So here is another, uh, this is the normal electron beam evaporator system and in the left side of uh, this figure there is another diagram which is also used in earlier cases so that here you can apply a high voltage here and there is a tungsten filament coil and the high voltage there will be spark here and this is the rod to be evaporated if this high voltage is the spark so that means some of the uh, material of this rod may be evaporated. It is connected to insulated support, the stepper motor you can rotate it so that uh, in this uh, uh, some arc discharge may be there and from there you can get some fill. But that is not used widely but e electron beam evaporation has got application, wide application in R&D as well as in, uh, in uh, the in, uh, manufacturing environment, okay. So these are the three techniques. Now let us discuss on multi-component films and just now I mentioned that deposition of alloys and compounds are also possible using the vacuum evaporation technique either by subsequent evaporation or the simultaneous evaporation. So there are three techniques which are mentioned here for deposition, physical vapor deposition of the metal films, uh, uh, films of various metals either layer by layer or you can deposit simultaneously. So here uh, there are three cases. In the first case if you see, here we can use the alloy melt, okay. The alloy melt can be evaporated and on the way for alloy film is deposited. But here there is a problem. This is a single source alloy deposition. What is the problem? After deposition, the composition of the alloy may not be the same as the charge. 
composition may differ. Why? The reason is difference in saturation vapor pressure of the individual components. One example is given here. For example, if you use titanium tungsten alloy, which evaporated at 2500 degree centigrade. So, there we have seen vapor pressure of titanium is 1 torr, whereas tungsten is 3 into 10 to the power minus 8 torr. So, the extremely low titanium vapor pressure is high compared to tungsten. So, what will happen here in the alloy film, the amount of titanium will be more than the tungsten because titanium vapor pressure is high compared to the tungsten. So, that is one of the reason you cannot maintain the ratio of the individual component in the alloy film. You cannot maintain it with respect to the charge, it may vary. So, that is why the, the evaporation of alloy melt either by radio, uh, uh, inductively heated technique or by electron evaporation technique is not used because of the problem of change in the composition of the alloy. So, now let us see the second technique. In the second technique what is done? So, material 1 and material 2, there are two materials are kept in a different heart, on a different heart and then you can evaporate either electron beam, mainly electron beam is used here. So, two source is used, one source is, is evaporating material 1, another source is evaporating material 2 and then by simultaneous evaporation you can form the alloy film. But here one of the problem is the material 1 or material 2 for example here the titanium and tungsten if you use it. So, they have different melting point, different melting point and if different melting point then the temperature required for evaporation of the two source are different. That means adjustment of the individual heart at a different temperature is critical. And again here also comes the saturation vapor pressure of individual component. So, there although you are simultaneously evaporating, it is better than that, but you cannot ensure here the composition of the intact remain uh, comp composition of the alloy film as you require, you cannot ensure it. So, that is why a third technique is proposed. What is being done here? The not simultaneous deposition, but subsequent deposition. Here they are using shutter arrangement. So, this material 1 and material 2 are kept on different hearts or crucible here. And on the wafer, initially say shutter 1 is open, then material 1 is deposited. Then this is closed and shutter 2 is open, then material 2 is deposited, then again material 1, then material 2, subsequently layer by layer deposit and at the end you anneal it. And during annealing, the interdiffusion of the metals will be there and you will get a alloy mixture of the film. So, here the film quality or alloy formation will depend on the thickness, if the area for a particular area the thickness of the deposited film. For example, if you need say 2 is to 1 composition, so say for example titanium say 40 angstrom, then you uh, tungsten 20 angstrom, then another 40 angstrom, then another 20 angstrom like that. In this ratio if you deposit the thickness, then after making alloy, so 2 times uh, ratio will be 2 is to 1 and uh, titanium tungsten alloy. So, in this way uh, you can get a correct alloy composition for multi component films, alloy films. Okay? So, three techniques, one is single source alloy techniques, second is simultaneous evaporation of two metals and the third is the subsequent evaporation one by one and then anneal so that they will form alloy with correct composition. Okay? So, these are the three techniques 
for multi component fill deposition. Now, what I mentioned, those are uh, again narrated here. So, in, con in co evaporation, multiple source run simultaneously in order to deposit an alloy structure, individual crucible temperature is different. Just I mentioned the second case co evaporation that is known as co evaporation. Simultaneously, you are evaporating multiple fill. There, the individual crucible temperature is different. Depo but deposition rates and vapor pressure are extremely sensitive function of temperature of the charge. You have to maintain different temperature of the charge, but at the same time deposition rate and vapor pressure are extremely sensitive to the function of temperature of the charge. Because of that you cannot ensure the correct composition of the deposited fill. And the third one, third alternative technique for depositing multi component fill is to perform a sequential deposition. This is done in a multiple source system by opening and closing shutters. The alloy is formed by sintering the multilayer film after deposition. Initially alloy is not formed, so that will be formed by sintering or by annealing at the end of the multilayer film deposition. Okay. So, this is all regarding multi component film. Now, I will discuss on sputter deposition technique. All these are physical vapor deposition. Now, I will switch over to sputter deposition technique. Sputtering technique already you aware of that particular technique because there you need a target material instead of charge using in used in vapor physical vapor deposition technique. In sputtering technique, we use target materials. Okay. The from target material, target source, we have to we have to uh, bombard some of the ions and then those materials will come out from the target and ultimately they will be deposited. Then let us see what is the technique used in sputter deposition. Sputtering an alternative to metal film deposition by evaporation was developed as a thin film deposition technique by Langmuir in 1920. This technique was developed first time by Langmuir in 1920. It has got certain advantages. What are those advantages? The important advantage is best step coverage than evaporation. Sputtering has got inherent property of better step coverage compared to evaporation technique. The second is it induces less radiation damage than EVM technique. Out of the three physical vapor deposition, we mentioned that EVM evaporation technique is the best one because it can produce better quality of metal film. But the problem was radiation damage. But in sputtering technique, that radiation damage will be less compared to electron beam technique. Another advantage of sputter deposition is that high deposition rate offered by modern design techniques of sputtering system. Sputtering technique is capable of depositing and maintaining complex alloy composition, which is difficult in physical vapor deposition technique capable of depositing and maintaining complex alloy compositions. It is also capable of depositing refractory metals and high temperature, refractory metals whose melting point is very high. By sputtering technique, you can deposit refractory metals. Refractory metals means molybdenum, tungsten, etcetera. 
So those materials will have very high melting point. If you want to use the physical vapor deposition, you have to have certain arrangement of heating those materials at temperatures more than 2000 degrees centigrade. Tungsten is nearly 3000 degrees centigrade. So that is very difficult requirement. But by sparkling technique, it is highly possible to deposit the refracted metals easily. It is also capable to maintain well controlled uniform deposition on large wafer of the order of 200 millimeter diameter. So you can deposit control manner with uniform deposition on large size wafer. So these are the advantages of spotter deposition. Okay. Now let us see the spotter deposition system. A simple system is shown here, the spotter deposition system. A spotter, simple spotter deposition system is similar to simple reactive ion age system. Already we have discussed the active ion age system in etching class, dry etching classes. So here you can see this is the target and this is the substrate holder. Wafers are kept on the substrate holder and a high voltage is applied at the target with respect to the wafers. Okay. Now gas inlet, through gas inlet you can inert gas are pushed into the chamber. First the chamber is evacuated using a vacuum pump and, the, and then argon gas is inserted into the sputter chamber. Argon is heavy ion, mass is high, it is a neutral not easily reacted with the substrate or target material that is why argon gas is used. And argon gas is ionized into the chamber and the ionization process already I have discussed in the dry etching class how the gases are ionized. So after ionization target surely has to be kept in a negative cathode, target has to be the cathode. So ions will be attracted by the cathode. So as a result of which the materials from the target will come out, it depends on the spotted yield and those materials are deposited on the wafer. And targets and wafers are gap should not be very large. If it is a small few centimeters above nearly 10 centimeter, then you can have a considerable amount of deposition on the wafer. Okay. Cathode and anode in a sputtering system are closely spaced nearly 10 centimeter. The closer the target is to the wafer, the higher the deposition rate. The particular material to be sputtered is made into a disc which is known as a target. Here the source material should not be in, in powder form, should not be in a liquid form or should not be in a gaseous form. Liquid and gaseous forms are used in CVD technique. Solid form or powder form, particularly powder form is or thin foil or rod etc. are used in physical vapor deposition. But in case of sputtering technique, the material is to be formed in a disc. Just like a disc you have to form the material and that can be done by hot press technique, sintering technique by pressing and that disc is known as a target and that target is fixed on the cathode. Okay. And it is thermally bonded to the cathode, a special type of a bonding material available and that target is thermally bonded to the cathode. Now the sputter deposition technique, uh, the argon plasma is sustained between the electrodes by secondary electrons 
generated from ion bombardment of the cathode. That is the principle, similar principle in reactive ionizing system argon is ionized. It will be ionized by secondary electrons generated from ion bombardment of the cathode. Now the gas pressure in the chamber is maintained about 0.1 torr. Plasma chamber is designed such that a high density of ions strikes a target containing the material to be operated. If you increase the ion density, the deposition rate will be more. Simple DC sparkling is used for elemental metal uh, deposition, but if you want the dielectric film to be deposited, then DC sparkling will not do the job, you have to go for RF sparkling. For deposition of insulating materials such as silicon dioxide, silicon nitride and RF plasma is used. These are the specific or salient features of sputter deposition technique. Now I will discuss on physics of sputtering. Physics of sputtering, so there in the figure is shown there are four actions when a inc uh, when a incident ion hits the surface of the target. The bombardment of the cathode means target in ion stream gives rise to the process of sputtering. And when an energetic ion strikes the target material, four things can happen. What are the four things? You see the incident ion, this is the incident ion shown here, when it hits the surface, there are several possibilities. If the energy of the incident ion is more, then what will happen? This particular ion will penetrate into the, into deeper of the sputtering target and it can go inside into the target which is known as implantation. That may not, that particular element may not come out. That is implantation. If energy is more, but if energy is not more, then what it can happen? So this incident ion may reflect it back as neutral. This incident ion may produce secondary electrons. This may also possible because the high energy argon when it hits the target, it can be neutralized and emitted as a neutral ion. When it is neutralized, then it is not ion neutral element or it can emit some of the electrons also which are known as secondary electrons or after hitting the incident ion what it can produce in the in the in the fourth situation here you can see here it can release its energy here and some of the atoms of the target may come out from the surface that is a sputtered atom that means when high energy incident atom bombard the surface of the target, it may implant, go deeper into the surface, it may be reflected back as a neutral, it may emit electrons, secondary electrons here or after giving up its whole energy to the target atom, the energy of the target atom may be increased so that this can come out from the surface of the target and it, the emitted, the sputtered atoms may deposit on the surface of the wafer. So these are the four possibilities when a high energy ion bombards on the target surface. Next, a plasma is initiated by applying a large voltage across a gap containing a low pressure that you know how a plasma is initiated. I discussed in detail in that dry etching class the iron milling technique. Similar technique is also valid here. The required breakdown voltage is given by VBD is proportional to PL divided by L log P plus B where P is the chamber pressure, L is the electrode spacing. Okay, and B is constant. An ion flux 
is also proportional to v to the power 3 by 2 divided by under root m i d square, where v is the voltage difference between the cathode and anode that means cathode is the target and on anode you are keeping your wafers. So, between these two electrodes the voltage applied voltage is V, m i is the mass of the ion and d is the dark space thickness. So, these are two equations which govern the whole process. One is the V B D that is required breakdown voltage, it is dependent on chamber pressure. Obviously, if chamber pressure is low, breakdown voltage will be low and if the length is also uh, uh, one governing parameter in the breakdown voltage, okay. the M i is the ion mass. Now, the sputter deposition rate depends on several factors. What are those factors? Ion flux to the target. If the ion flux is more, the deposition rate also will be more. Transport of sputtered material across the plasma to the substrate, one is the ion flux, next is the transportation. The materials or atom will come out from the target, how it is transported through the plasma onto the substrate. That is also a deciding factor of the deposition rate. The figure of merit or a measurement of the sputtering efficiency is defined as sputtered yield which is equal to the ratio of number of target atoms ejected to the number of ions incident on the target number of target atoms ejected divided by number of ions incident on the target that ratio is known as sputtered yield and sometimes it is expressed as percentage then you have to multiply the whole thing by 100. So, S the sputtered yield depends on ion mass, ion energy, target mass empty, target crystallinity those are the factors on which the sputtered yield depends. Then sputtered yield is proportional to m i ln e divided by m t e cos theta. Theta is the incidence angle of the ion with the target material. Theta is the incidence angle of the ion with target mid normal. m i is the ion mass, e is the energy, m t is the target mass. Okay. The sputtered yield is given by this relation. Important concern in sputtered deposition is to increase the ion bombardment on the cathode means target for achieving reasonable deposition rate. How to increase the ion bombardment on the target? That is the primary concern in order to have higher deposition on substrate surface. Okay. So, these are the mechanism of sputtering, physics of sputtering and different parameters which govern the sputtering process. Okay. Now, there is another kind of sputtering which is known as the magneton sputtering and magneton sputtering is different from DC or RF sputtering. In magnetic sputtering process, in addition to electric field between the two target uh, two, two plates, one is the target, another is the substrate holder, which is the anode. Another magnetic field is used for confinement of the plasma in case of magnetron sputtering system. Now, let us discuss on magnetron sputtering system. And here, as I mentioned, a magnetic field is applied. And the application of a magnetic field in a plasma causes the electron to spiral around the direction of the magnetic lines because the, the, the 
magnetic field will interact with ions because of the presence of the magnetic field the electrons may spiral and because of that energy of the electrons may increase and there these highly energized electrons will ionize the argon atom so automatically the argon atoms number of ion flux will be more because of the high energy electrons those are secondary electrons basically they will heat the argon atom and argon atoms will be ionized with a higher efficiency and the ion flux will be more and because of that the sputter deposition will be higher higher rate okay the radius of the orbital motion is given by r is equal to m v b by q where m is the mass and mass of electron and uh, v is the velocity b is the magnetic field and q is the charge of electron m v q electron mass velocity charge respectively and b is the magnetic field that is the radius of the orbital motion under the action of magnetic field okay now the orbital motion of electron increases the probability of collision with neutral species and create ions just now i mentioned so ion flux will will increase the probability of collision with neutral atom neutral, neutral atom means if you use argon then argon atom will be more and it create more ions the increased ion density increases the rate of ion bombardment of the target the increased ion density increases the rate of ion bombardment of the target typical ion density in normal sputtering is 0.0001% whereas in magnetron system it approaches 0.03% you see the difference ion density in magnetron sputtering is several order higher than ordinary normal sputtering it is 0.03 and here 0.0001 at least two order higher isn't it use of magnetron allows the formation of plasma at lower chamber pressure 10 to the power minus 5 to 10 to the power minus 3 torr if you can deposit you can form the plasma at lower chamber pressure then advantage is that the contamination will be less okay so this is one of the advantage wherever in case of uh, the normal sputtering you require 0.1 torr here you see 10 to the minus 5 to 10 to the minus 3 torr that means you can create at lower chamber pressure which will help you to get high quality film highly pure film then let us uh, show you some picture of the magnetron sputtering system and here the target and p is the plasma here is the vertical cylindrical magnetron this is a planar magnetron planar magnetron here is the magnetic field sputter gas is inserted here here is the vacuum you can create the vacuum here so this is the magnet and here the electrons will be energized with the magnet and the ion flux will increase so this is typical diagram of magnetron sputtering system now a planar magnetron uses basic parallel plate reactor either a solenoid or a set of magnets is added behind the target to create magnetic field lines parallel to the surface of the target in case of planar magnetron a cylinder cylindrical magnetron starts with a cylindrical plasma chamber with a target electrode at the center wafer holding electrodes is the vertical wall of the chamber a electromagnetic winding generates vertical magnetic field so here is a problem because wafer holding electrode is the vertical wall so if the vertical wall if it is a cylindrical then you cannot accommodate large number of wafer that is the problem 
large diameter wafers cannot be placed on the walls of the cylindrical chamber that was the problem of the magneton sparking system okay one picture of the sputtered sputtered gun deposition is also shown here this is the in s gun high deposition rates are achieved through crossed electric and magnetic fields the wafers may be mounted in a planetary cage similar to the geometry of an evaporator typical deposition rates are hundreds of angstrom per minute in this particular case this is a improved version of the magneton sputtering system and third one is the bias sputtering okay so time is up we'll discuss this point in next class Thank you.